folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing another movie review this week. This time, it's the new fifth installment in the Mission Impossible movie series called Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Now, before we get to that, um, I just want to say that I always did enjoy the Mission Impossible 60 series, the ones that they often play on TV nowadays, on MeTV. Um, it's a series that basically what got its start about um, the agency of IMF, which stands for Impossible Mission Force, we basically have, you know, one agent named Jim Phelps, who basically listens to a record message on their next mission, and they always end with, this message will self-destruct in five seconds. Good luck, Jim. And it explodes, no matter what where they use all their special forces by using uh, gadgetry, technology, you know, such as the mask, you know, for disguises, and, and they always find out their, their latest secret before they finally complete their mission. And they do. They do that in every single episode. And of course, you, who could have forget the theme song that's done by um, Lalo Scaffron, who, who basically, you know, as we know it, they always start with by lighting the match onto the rope and once it starts um, sparking all the way around you get to see like clips on on how it takes place so yeah you're just seeing basically clips about what's going to happen in the next episode or so you know that's that's about to begin they did it exactly the same way in the movie too so that's interesting and it goes like this do 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 and that that alone became the best series of all time and it later spawned off the late 80s series that aired on ABC. Uh, I think I've seen the show before um, when it aired. But that alone would later become the movie series, as you already know as of now, which has Tom Cruise playing Ethan Hunt, who was one of the uh, IMF's uh, agents. So he goes around becoming the leader of the pack, who goes around going on their special missions. Plus it has tons of great action scenes, no matter what. Because they're so memorable, and it had an awesome crew, so that's where you got. <laughs> yeah, and I always love all the movies. Um, I'll give you that. Um, I thought it worked pretty well for a series because I remember seeing the first movie at a drive-in theater in Van Nuys uh, when when it was Pacific Theaters at the time. It, it was before it got demolished and became a high school. But that's the movie that got its start. I mean, it started out as pretty confusing, but, but that alone will later become as we know it today. And it got better and better as they come around. And that was the one that had, uh, you know, John Boyd with uh, Jean Reno and Emilio Estevez in an uncredited role, Christian Scott Thomas. It has a great cast. So, yes, Brian De Palma directed that one. Um, and then there was the second movie that that started it all to make it even better as the series went along. That's the one that was directed by John Wu. Had a powerful villain that's uh, that was always will be remembered by. And he was played by Doug Ray Scott, the same actor who played the prince in Ever After Cinderella Story. And he was very good. And it also has um, the actress uh, Fandi Newton, yeah, who went on to do other films. Yep, and he even got uh, Anthony Hopkins in an uncredited role, who's uh, the mission commander. So yeah, it had some great special effects and lots of great stunts, all done by, of course, you know, Tom Cruise, because he was known for doing all of his stunts, and like he did in the first film. Oh, and then there was the third movie, which this time it was directed by J.J. Abrams, who would later become the executive producer of the last two sequels after um, the third one 
you have a ghost protocol and, and rogue nation of course yes this is the one that had the late great Philip Seymour Hoffman as the villain it had Michelle Monaghan as Ethan Hunt's wife awesome action scenes including where they had a bunch of bad guys shooting all these missiles that's about to shoot the uh, the bridge and he was actually running as fast as he can until he went straight into the, the car and explodes. Yeah, who could forget that scene? And then, of course, there was Ghost Protocol, which this time was directed by an animated director, Brad Bird, the same director who gave us The Simpsons, um, The Iron Giants, and The Incredibles. Yeah, and I know he directed Tomorrowland. This is the one where Ethan Hunt actually went on top of the skyscraper. And yeah, it's it's the one where you actually feel um, some vertical right there, having to go all the way on top of it. There was also a new skyscraper that was built um, that's somewhere in Dubai. Yeah. So it's like, wow. <laughs> so now we're going to get to Rogue Nation. So... Once again, it stars Tom Cruise as Ethan Hunt, Simon Pegg, Jeremy Renner, Rebecca Ferguson, Ben Rames, Sean Harris, Alec Baldwin, Zhang Jane Shu, Jens Holston, Simon McBurney, America Olivo, and Tom Hollander. And it's written and directed by Christopher McQuarrie. The movie begins on their mission after accepting nerve gas that's being bought and sold to terrorists on an airplane. IMF agent Ethan Hunt, who's played by Tom Cruise, is convinced that he can prove the existence of an international criminal consortium known as the Syndicate, which unfortunately the CIA does not believe. Hunt, however, was captured by the Syndicate at a local record store, already for his secret mission, from a blonde man in glasses who's later identified as a former MI6 agent, Solomon Lane, who's played by Sean Harris, who already shot an employee just right in front of Hunt while stuck in a room filled with nerve gas, and definitely uh, leaves him unconscious. He later woken up and was escaped by a torture chamber that's led by a syndicate member, Janix, Bone Doctor Venter, who's played by Johns Halston, already with the help of an MI6 agent and syndicate operative, Elsa False, who's played by Rebecca Ferguson. But meanwhile, the CIA director, Alan Huntley, who's played by Alec Baldwin, along with IMF Field Operations Director William Brandt, who's played by Jeremy Renner, testified before a Senate committee. The IMF, who's currently without a secretary in charge, is controversial because of its destructive methods. Huntley, of course, who dislikes um, Hunt, succeeds in having the IMF disbanded and absorbed into the CIA. Brandt, knowing that Huntley will try to capture him, warns Hunt to stay undercover. By already being cut off by the IMF, Hunt only follows Lane, which only leads to six months later, where he actually remains a fugitive. He recruits a former colleague named Benji Dunn, who's played by Simon Pegg, to attend an opera Turandot in Benna to search for Lane who actually suspects that he might be the syndicate leader. But despite of stopping free snipers, which includes False, already in a golden dress, yeah, he winds up um, shooting the, the Austrian Chandler in the arm, you know, just to be safe, and winds up stopping all these snipers. Yeah. And by the way, Austrian Chandler was played by Rupert Rickham. Hunt wants up being blamed for the death of him after being killed already with a bomb planted inside his car and explodes. Yeah, well, you know, Hunt and, and Foss had escaped. But then Brent recruits former agent Luf Stickle, 
was played by Ben Rames to find Hunt before the CIA Special Activities Division kills him. Using his likeness of false left by Hunt, Brandt and Stickel track Hunt, Dunn and False to Morocco, where the latter group infiltrates a secure server beneath a power station by changing access control data stored in the underwater turbine tank. Yeah, which apparently uh, this is where inside the the secure room, so that way you know he'd be recognized once uh, Ethan wants up going underwater to actually uh, you know replace the the disc and and put inside the sh the slot you know before he wants up getting knocked out by one of these machines that's that spins around where all the water wants up going straight down. You know, before you know, they started rebooting it, and that's when it starts to get worse because he was almost running out of air. Anyway, after having to stole uh, what it believes to be a ledger containing the names of all the syndicate agents, False betrays the others and flees with the data on the USB flash drive. Even in his group, Bran and Sicko, as well as the syndicate members, wants up chasing False. Yeah. So they chased around, you know, in in a car. Later on, you know, Ethan winds up chasing the false by um, by going on one of their motorcycles. The syndicate members are chasing her around, and which unfortunately, false winds up um, uh, getting out of her motorcycle and and actually stand right in front of Ethan, and that's when Ethan winds up. Uh, already getting knocked unconscious by flipping all the way around the motorcycle <laughs> and stop but of course false escapes you know with the disc but Dunn actually reveals that he has already made a copy of all the data files so false returns to London in an attempt to use the file to enter mission to affiliate the syndicate but her MI6 handler Adley who's played by Simon McBurney I compels to continue, but then she and Lane learns that Adley had wiped all the information on the drive, which contains the encrypted British government red box that requires the Prime Minister's biometrics to unlock. The former IMF agents confronts False, but when Lane's men had abducted Dunn, they are told that they must deliver a decrypted copy of the drive to Lane by night. And in spite of others' objections, Hunt realized that Lane would always have a plan to acquire those files. Believing the way to stop him was to confront him, and Hunt wants up agreeing to the ultimatum. But as part of Hunt's plan, Brant reveals the location to Huntley. At a London charity auction, Huntley, Brant, and Attlee decide to take on the Prime Minister to a secure room just for protection. And of course, already with Atlee, you know, reveals himself as a disguised hunt. He has the Prime Minister confirm that the existence of the Syndicate, which includes a classified proposed project to perform missions without oversight. But when the real Atlee arrives, Hunt forces him to admit that he began the Syndicate without permission. So he's been covering up his, his existence ever since. So they, of course, they went rogue nation once Lane had hijacked the project. Sakel, of course, discovers that the file actually contains access to villains and currency. Hunt destroys the file and tells Lane that he memorized all the datas to force Lane to release Dunn and False in exchange of what he knows. Dunn escapes to Sakel and Brandt while Ethan and False are separate as Binter and his man chased them around throughout the streets of London. False kills Binter in a knife fight while Ethan lures Lane into a bulletproof cell where he is gassed by all that nerve gas similar to what he did to uh, Hunt and already has been taken to custody. Hunt and Bran have returned to the committee while Huntley requests the reinstatement of the IMF claiming that he wanted to be disbanded all allowed to Hunt to go undercover. So the senators, though skeptical, eventually agree. So now Huntley becomes the new secretary 
of the IMF and the movie ends. And I gotta say, the series just gets better and better as it goes around, especially this fifth installment, which actually has incredible and stunning action scenes that I will never forget. I mean, especially when he had to go all the way on top of the airplane that's just about to take off from the terrorists, and he was trying to get into the door, which he just hang on to, you know, having the done uh, working with the tablet, trying to secure all the, the locks, which unfortunately he was having trouble with, so he finally did it. And yeah, unfortunately he opened the wrong uh, door, but then he finally, after all, all the tries that he had to take, he finally unopens the door that he was hanging on and, and try to stop all these bad guys and, and take out all the, the, the entire package of nerve gas. So that way, you know, they won't have another attack. And but another scene that I love, however, was the the motorcycle chase between Hunt and Foss because already, you know, Foss was already being chased around other syndicate um, agents that's already going after Hunt too. So yeah, they were already chasing her around. Yeah, what Hunt was already being unconscious after being in, inside the, the turbine tank underwater and almost uh, ran out of oxygen after that yeah because he was still unconscious from that and, and he was already <laughs> having the ride on on the the car yeah with a Dunn and and just <laughs> you know it creates a whole uh, intense uh, car chase until it went all the way straight to the motorcycle and they had some great stunts right there too and and I always remember and the scene, of course, where where Foss wants up um, getting out of the motorcycle, and she wants up standing right in the middle of the road, just as Helm was already going straight after her, and and when he did, yeah, he flipped over and got unconscious, yeah, because you know Foss just stole the disc, which thank God that Dunn just made a uh, an actual copy of it. Um. Yeah, and I thought uh, Rebecca Ferguson did a good job playing Faults. I mean, she she's definitely the the one who actually who you couldn't trust at first because I know she's always betraying them. You know, because in order for her to actually grab the dust to give it to uh, the uh, MI6. And I'll give you this though. I thought um, Solomon Lane, in my opinion, was was a weak character. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's okay to have characters that has a quiet type who who's basically responsible for actually, uh, you know, killing um, lots of innocent victims uh, throughout the entire world. I mean, mostly because he's the one responsible by hiring all these syndicate agents and terrorists and all that. So it's sort of part of an insight plan. But I felt the the best character of them all, in my opinion, was the um, the Bone Doctor because he's the one that was very strong. He had uh, lots of tools, including that sharp blade that he has, enough so he can cut, uh, you know, hunt like he did when he was in the torture chamber. You know, he tried to do that, but <laughs> but of course he escapes. Yeah, I mean, he he's very menacing already. But yes, um, I thought he was great, in my opinion. And once again, it was great to see, you know, Ben Rames as Lufer, as well as uh, Jeremy Renner, and, um, and of course Simon Pegg. It's too bad that Paula Patton didn't return for this sequel, and I wish she did, because she would have been good. I, I would imagine if they had something that they were going to go for. But that's exactly what they were doing anyway. They they want to focus on another girl, like False. And yeah, um, it's a it's a great action film and and a great sequel too. And I'm just glad the series is is finally uh, continuing to go on because I know there's going to be another one pretty soon too. And so that way they'll follow on their next mission. Check this movie out. So anyway, I give Mission Impossible 
Rogue Nation, five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.